if you need to write a strong and concise abstract for your next research paper, then this video is going to help you. The abstract is the first thing a reader will look at, and based on this, they'll decide if they want to read the rest of your research paper or not, so it's really important to get it right. Hey everyone, Academic Duck here, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Leho, and I'm a clinical academic doctor working as part of the NHS in the UK. I created this channel to help medical students and doctors like yourselves in enhancing their portfolio, be it through research, audits, presentations and exams, you name it. I also have videos on how to get into medical and academic training pathways in the UK. I also share useful tips and tricks on my social media platforms, so if you're not already following me, check out my Instagram and of course my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be going through what an abstract is, a step-by-step -step guide on how to write an abstract and then I'll be showing you a real abstract for one of my research papers and I think that's the key part of learning how to write one. Make sure to watch till the end of this video because the tips I'm about to share with you guys can really save you a lot of time when you're writing your abstract and help you publish your first research paper. Some of you might be thinking, well she's going on and on about abstracts but what really is an abstract? So, an abstract is the first thing any reader will read and it's what makes them decide whether they read the rest of your research paper or not. Having a strong and concise abstract can make the difference of whether your research paper gets accepted for publication or not. These days, a lot of conferences also use abstracts to decide whether to accept a particular research or not. So having that clear, strong abstract can really make that difference. An abstract is a short and concise summary of your research paper. It's usually the last thing you write before you press submit. The length of an abstract is usually somewhere between 200 and 300 words, although this can vary depending on the type of journal or conference you're submitting to. If you're writing an abstract as part of a university thesis or dissertation, the abstract usually comes after the title page. There are a couple of things you should bear in mind when you're writing a research abstract. Firstly, it's really important to include any key words related to your research area. The reason for this is when someone is searching, let's say, on Google Scholar to find any relevant articles, using keywords within the abstract can help someone identify your article. Secondly, it's really important that an abstract is written in your own words. Thirdly, and probably one of the most important things to bear in mind when you're writing an abstract is that it should be written using lay language so that it can be understood by most people. Most abstracts don't actually have references, but certain conferences may allow you to have a few references when you're submitting. If you're writing an abstract for an original research paper, it's very common for it to be structured within certain subheadings. These are usually the background section, the methods, results, followed by the discussion and conclusions. But this can vary depending on the journal that you're submitting to. So what I'd recommend is before you start writing your abstract, check out the author guidelines for the journal you're planning on submitting to. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the structure of the abstract and how you can modify it to try and write that strong and really clear abstract that gets accepted. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the first sentence. Now, the reason I say this is because it's so important. It's what decides whether the reader continues to read your research paper or ultimately even closes the tab down. I tend to start all of my abstracts with a problem statement and I'll show you what I mean by this later on in the real abstract demonstration. The first part of an abstract is the background section. This is where we really need to provide background information on our research area, highlight the research problem or the gap in evidence, and then highlight the aims of our study. I like to aim for around three or four sentences for this particular subsection of the abstract. As I mentioned before, the first sentence should usually be your problem statement. The next one or two sentences should summarize what is already known and where the gap in literature is. And then the final sentence of the background 
background section should really highlight what your study is set out to do. Next comes the method sections. Describe the main methodology of your research in two or three sentences. Obviously, if it's a little bit more complicated, then you might end up with a slightly larger method section. The main thing with the method section is to make sure that you include any details which really helps the reader interpret your results. So let's say you were doing a qualitative study. The important things within the method section that you'd want to mention is what type of participants were recruited? How did you recruit them? What was the qualitative methodology that you adopted? Was it interviews, focus groups? How did you analyze the data? Next comes the results. Now this will form the main bulk of your abstract. And the key thing here is to summarize your key results. And why I say the word key is, we don't want to write down every single result that our study found, but really the ones that help address our research question or directly relate to the aim of our study. I'd aim for around four sentences, for this particular subsection, but depending on the nature of the study, it might be slightly longer. For example, qualitative studies tend to be a bit more wordy, so you might end up with a slightly longer results section than you would for a quantitative study. The last section of an abstract is the conclusions. These are the key take home messages that you want the reader to understand from your study. I'd aim for around two sentences and use this section to really highlight what the implications of your study are. Is this changes in clinical guidelines? Are you changing clinical practice? Or you might use this section to highlight what future research needs to be done within this area. So now for the more exciting bit, I'll share a real abstract that I've written and published with you guys and we'll go through it step by step to really understand the nitty gritty of what makes it such a clear and concise abstract. So this is an abstract of a systematic review and meta-analysis looking at whether individuals from ethnic minority backgrounds were well represented in clinical trials conducted in the UK. Let's go through each part of the abstract systematically. Let's have a look at the first statement. You can see that we start with a problem statement. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted health disparities affecting ethnic minority communities. I find it really helpful to start with bold statements like this as it really helps draw the reader in. You could adapt this to something more generic like diabetes is the biggest public health challenge or you can even include some numbers like x number of people have a certain condition globally. In the next few sentences of the background section we want to highlight the key concepts of our research study so that our reader has a snapshot on what research is already out there and what is known. So you can see in our abstract what we've done is in the next sentence we've summarized what is already known about the impact of COVID-19 on minority individuals. And then the last sentence of our background section highlights the aim or the objective of our study. In our particular case, the background section is quite short as we were tight for words, but you could easily add in an extra sentence or two if your word count permits. As you probably guessed, right after the background section is the methods. You can see straight away in the first sentence we've highlighted the study design we use by saying a systematic review and meta-analysis was undertaken. I find this technique really helpful as the reader knows instantly what methodology you use to answer your research question. In the next few sentences, we have written about the databases we use when the search was run. Obviously, this is only relevant if you have done a systematic review. Then we have directly extracted our inclusion exclusion criteria from our main paper and summarized it into one sentence. In the methods section of the main paper, there are usually other subsections like data sources, instruments, or when the samples were collected, but we don't need to include all of these details in the abstract. One rule I tend to stick by when I'm writing the methods section is to only include as much detail in the methods as it is needed for the reader to interpret our study results. So if it's not directly relevant to the results of the study, then you don't need to include it in your abstract. Then you can go on and mention any other key parts of the methods, like what type of statistical analysis you did and what software you did it in. So next comes the results section. 
In this study, you can see that the results section is very systematic because the methodology of this research study lends itself to a more structured approach. We start by mentioning how many articles we identified at the beginning and then at each step of the screening process. If your study involved people, you'd want to mention the total number of participants, key demographic characteristics like their mean age, proportion of females and any other relevant characteristics. In the next few sentences, we've written about specific findings from our meta-analysis and highlighted the 95% confidence intervals and p-values where relevant. This is really important if you're doing quantitative work. For the last part of our abstract, we've again started with a bold statement highlighting the main thing our study found by saying Asian, Black and mixed ethnic groups were underrepresented or incorrectly classified in UK COVID-19 randomised control trials. Next, we've highlighted what the implications of our findings are and possible solutions. If you've got space, you can even mention any key limitations of your study like we have here by saying these findings may not apply outside of the UK setting. So having a look through this research paper, you can see how our abstract is a brief glimpse of what the main research paper is all about. All right, friends, I know how confusing it can be to write an abstract, but I really hope that today I've been able to persuade you and also give you some steps into how to write a strong and clear abstract. Let me know in the comment section below whether you found the video useful in terms of clarifying how to write an abstract, because at the end of the day, that's the main goal of producing these videos. You're also just welcome to come and say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from and what research paper you're working on at the moment. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, do hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest content. Thanks very much for watching and I'm now going to go back and do some of my own research work. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!